Hi, and welcome to Rosebred Homestead. Here in our community, we focus on three main things, and that is food security, self-reliance, and emergency preparedness. And we so appreciate all of you for sharing our videos, for liking, and for subscribing. It helps get the word out. We are very science-based here, and we follow appropriate canning rules. We don't do any cowboy canning or anything like that. Uh, and so we just really appreciate you. The video that we just published three or four days ago um, on how to make and use powdered vegetables has been one of our most popular ones so quickly. And for that, we deeply thank you. We just love our viewers and our subscribers. You are so great. And the comments under that video were fabulous. I ask for it to be a, a share on how you use uh, how you use powdered veggies and what equipment you use and boy I was not disappointed and if you have not skimmed through those comments you might want to go back to that video and just read because there are some phenomenal ways to use veggie powders and some very different ways that uh, people use to grind them. Uh, many reported they use the Nutribullet blender and boy I found one online at an, on Amazon for around $55 some people use the Ninja blender, that one is under 100. Then people use coffee grinders and spice grinders and um, all different other kinds of blenders. Um, I use a Vitamix, a lot of people use Vitamix, but other things as well. And then some even use a mortar and pestle, which amazed me, so that was, that was pretty great. And so um, we are going to talk today about soups. And when we come back, I'm going to tell you why I feel that this video is so important, at least for our family. So we'll get back in just a moment. This is a very different type of soup, and um, it's, a, it's for a different purpose from my perspective. And so I wanted to accomplish two things. With the powdered vegetables, my first goal was to put together some recipes that I could um, put together in a jar um, that would make one quart of soup and that would be shelf stable for quite some time, up to maybe a year, even 18 months or so. We're going to do three things with these soups. I'm going to show you how to put them together for storage, and uh, we'll talk about how they need to be um, sealed and prepared for storage, um, how, to, how to package them up for gifts, and then last of all, we're going to talk about how we can make individual servings like what I had wanted to do for lunch. So here are the four soups that we're going to be doing today. We're, and these are all original recipes, so far as I know. Um, this is beet velvet soup, and these ingredients are not layered. They're all mixed in together, and uh, that will become apparent the reason why uh, as we go forward. This one is tomato celery soup, and it was based on a suggestion by uh, one of our viewers. And, um, uh, but it's very, very different than the recipe there. So um, we'll talk about that one too. Here's the one that was the teaser in the last video. This is what they look like layered, and this is what they look like when um, you give them as a little gift. And this is a uh, creamy asparagus soup, and we'll talk about the packaging in just a minute. And then I have some ingredients here, but there's no example. And that's because we ate the whole thing. <laughs> this was so good. I have to admit that this is our favorite. And this is broccoli cheddar soup, and it is amazing. Um, we're going to, at the end of the video, cook up one of these soups, or heat it up, get it ready to eat, and we're going to do the broccoli cheddar. So let's get started. So I'm go next is our asparagus soup. Now for this one, I already have it in gift form, and it is stacked or layered. So this one I want to do mixed, and so it's going to be important for me to uh, weigh out the total ingredients here, and I'll show you how I do that. There's one fourth cup milk solids, as usual. A 
a third of a cup of asparagus powder. Oh, smells so good. Woohoo. I'm glad it smells good. It is good. I got a little bit of an extra amount in there. It won't hurt a thing. And then we are ready for the fourth of a cup of potato powder. This is onion powder made from freeze-dried onions. Some of these veggie powders were freeze-dried, some were dehydrated, and some, like the broccoli, are a mix of both. So there's the onion powder and a fourth of a teaspoon of garlic powder. And a fourth of a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Okay, so this powder weighs 72.8. Now I'm going to write that down. Now, this one is already layered. This is one that I want to mix all up because I'm going to do something else with it. So I'm just going to put it in the jar and now shake it. And I want to completely combine these ingredients so every ingredient is equally distributed. And if that means dumping it back and forth between jars, then do it. With this, I just kind of roll it and shake it. And now this is what it looks like, all green. But because I have measured this out and this makes one quart, now I can divide this by four and find out how much I'm going to need for one cup of soup, which is a single serving. Broccoli cheddar, fourth of a cup milk solids, a third of a cup of broccoli powder. So the veggies are, for a quart are generally right at a third. And fourth of a cup of potato powder. This was hands down the family favorite. Okay, I'm going to use one tablespoon of powdered carrots. It gives a, a lovely flavor and um, carrot just lifts it and gives it just a little bit of sweetness. So there's our carrot and a third of a cup of cheese. And this is freeze-dried cheese. That's so pretty. And then uh, salt and pepper. This is smoked paprika. Oh my goodness, what a lovely taste this gives. And so I'm just putting a pinch of that smoked paprika in. And a pinch of dry mustard. And this is full to the brim. So this is our broccoli cheddar soup right here. And um, we have things set up right here. We have two versions of each one of the four soups. Off camera, I mixed another batch of this um, broccoli cheddar and I mixed it all together. Okay, so now what? Now that we have them this way, what do we do? Well, for storage, let's talk about that first. You can store it on your pantry shelves either in layers like this, but layers only work if you're going to be using the entire jar to make a pot of soup because then you'll dump the whole thing in to your liquid. Uh, for instance, your liquid in a, a quart of your home canned broth, whatever that is. 
if you are going to be putting it into individual serving sizes for lunches, then you want to mix everything all together so you have an equal distribution of all of those ingredients. So um, that's what we need to do for storage. The other thing we need to do for storage is um, if we're going to keep it on our shelves for a year to a year and a half, then we need to vacuum seal it. And, uh, or you can put oxygen absorbers, whichever one, but we want to remove as much oxygen as we possibly can. And then the other thing is to keep it in a cool and dark place. Now I want to just show you our carrot powder. Um, this has just been sitting out in my kitchen since I powdered it probably three weeks ago. Notice that it is fading. Um, there's a lot of white in there. Now I can twirl it around and get orange underneath, which is good. But because this has been in the, exposed to the light and not even direct sunlight, indirect sunlight, um, it is fading. So I'm going to be moving all of my vegetable powders into a cool, dark place. So that's how we need to store it and prepare it for um, putting on your pantry shelf. Now these just make really wonderful gifts. Now um, this was our teaser. This is the cream of asparagus soup. And uh, what I did here was I just wrapped it with some fancy string and I, I made this little tag. It's a handmade tag. And these images were just images. I, I said asparagus image in Google and it brought up a zillion. On the front it says um, instant creamy asparagus soup, add contents to four cups chicken broth or water, bring to a simmer and stir until thickened, serve hot, garnish with creme fraiche or heavy cream. So you could do that. On the back side it gives the ingredients. And so if you are going to give a gift it is really nice to give them um, instructions on what to do as well as the ingredient. Now let's go to individual servings. In the list of ingredients, I will give the gram weight of how much you need to measure out for an individual serving. Now while I was thinking about that, I remembered that I had a lot of these little plastic containers. This is a two ounce container and this is, um, this is the asparagus soup that I made. Oh, it's probably six weeks old right now. And um, I made four and this is the last one left. And people who have been using these just um, heat up a cup of our chicken broth and then put this in. Since that time, I have um, made my own um, bouillon. <clears throat> this is powdered chicken broth, my own chicken bone broth that I freeze dried and then powdered. Now I have a video on this and the really cool thing is that when I published this video a number of people commented on the fact that they have done this in the dehydrator and I was thrilled to hear that. So here are some alternatives to a freeze dryer. You can, um, one way you can do it is that you can take your bone broth and boil it down, boil it down, boil it down until it is like, like a thick syrup and then you can spread it in your dehydrator and dehydrate it and then you can powder it. Or you can just put the broth in your dehydrator if you have one of those little sh um, trays that has a little lip on the side so that the liquid doesn't um, um, spill over. But I was really thrilled to know that that was a possibility. Now on the back of my chicken broth, because I tested this out, two level tablespoons equals one cup, 45 grams equals one quart. And that was my broth, but you can figure that out. I just, I, I knew that I uh, put in the freeze dryer four quarts. And so when it was dry, I divided the number of grams of powder by four. That told me how many quarts, I mean, how many grams made up a quart. And then from there, I was able to mathematically figure out two tablespoons per cup. So I also have a little a set of larger and these are called portion cups and these are half cup size and so now what I can do and looking at the recipe now um, for the broccoli broccoli cheddar um, the whole mix was 133 grams and so it turns out to be 33 grams in a container for my lunch. So let's do my lunch. So here is the broccoli cheddar all mixed together. So I'm going to turn the scale on and out of this jar, which makes a full quart, I am going to measure 33 grams of the powder. 
And because I am going to just take this for lunch today, I'm going to, well, not really, but if it were today, I would then um, put two level tablespoons of the chicken bone broth right on the top of that. Now, if I were going to store these in these uh, little containers, I would not add the bone broth until ready to go because the bone broth is fatty and I don't want that on the storage sh shelf mixed in with the soup. Then put this little lid on and take a look. There's my lunch for next week. And um, all I would need to do is I have a, a mug in my office, I just, I just um, heat up a cup of water in my mug, dump this in, stir it around, and I've got it. So let's see how quickly this works, and let's just cook this up as if I am going to be fixing it for lunch, and I'll meet you over here at the stove. So I have one cup of water that I'm going to put in this little pan, and it should come to a boil, boil fairly fast. Okay, we have some bubbles. I'm just going to dump the whole thing in. And just quickly stir this around. It instantly dissolves. It's a very pretty color. Lunch. So I want you to see the thickness of it. So that's the potato in there that thickens it up really nicely and you can use different types of tomato, uh, potatoes. It is so good. It is so good. Even though it's 100 degrees outside, I'm going to have this bowl of soup and I'll share it with Jim. Wonderful. So that's just how easy it is, these powdered soups. So I hope that you will try some of these. They're fabulous. And I was thinking what I would like to do is to just to take this empty jar and make up a whole lot of those little um, cups full of the soup mix and keep them in here. And then whenever I want to, I can just pull one out and then um, add the bone broth to it, either liquid or the powdered bone broth, and then have a little snack. So that's it. I hope you find this useful. I hope you experiment like crazy and develop some fabulous recipes with powdered veggies. Thanks so much for being with us, and we'll see you at our next video.